Chiputa atras rupam rupam tasakaja vipuri maturim Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev and to Srila Prabhupada and all of our Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Prabhupada. And finally, I offer my pranam to Maharajas and all the Samuk Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. So, by the causes mercy of Sri Guru and Gauranga, you have all come. Many of you from very far away, at a great expense and undergoing many difficulties to come here. So you should not leave empty-handed. 
if you try to receive something that will change your life forever. Try to hear very carefully. If a person is practicing bhakti in high class association in Anugatya under the guidance of advanced Vaishnavas, then there should be some results, some symptoms. Vasu Devi Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojitaha Janyati Asu Vairagyam Jnanam Chaya Dhoitukha By rendering loving service to Sri Krishna, then Dhoitukhi, without any cause at all, without any worldly cause, then Tattvajnana, realization of the difference between matter and spirit, of the self, the soul, and the mind-body complex. Jnana, transcendental knowledge, and also Vairagya, dispassion, detachment from the objects of the senses, detachment from bhogabriti, the enjoying tendency. So all of these things, they should come by practicing bhakti. In Bhagavad Gita, Arjun asked Sri Krishna Stita Pragyasya Ka Bhasha Samadhistasya Keshava Stita Dear Kim, pra, mm, kim Prabhasita Kim Asita Prajeta Kim Arjun said O oh Krishna, what are the symptoms of a person who is in Samadhi? Stita Pratya, whose consciousness is fixed in transcendence. What are his symptoms? Stita Dikim Prabhasita. How does such a person speak? Kimasita, how does he sit? Prajeta Kim, and how does he walk? That does not mean, does he sit in the lotus position or in a chair? How does he sit? That means, what is his situation when he is not engaged with the outer world? And how does he walk? Doesn't mean, does he walk with a limp or with a walking stick? It means, how does he move when he's interacting with the outer world? So, Sri Krishna replied to these three questions. Prajati yadakaman sarvan pata manoratan Atman in, atmanai vendriya, uh, atmanai, uh, atmana tushta tasya pragya pratishtita prajati yada kama that person has given up all desires why? because sarvam pata manogatam they have no relation at all 
All worldly desires have no relation with Atma, the soul. Sarvam Patama Nogatam. All desires, they are coming from the subtle covering of the material mind only. The mind can be steady or it can be oscillating. So when the mind is steady fixed, it's called sthita pragya. Automatically, there is a realization. The tattva jnana begins to appear. And if the mind is restless, chanchal, oscillating, modifying so many chitta vrittis, then this is manifest in the form of attachment, desires, worldly ambitions. This is the difference. In Gita, see Krishna said, Samatva Yoga Uchate. Yoga means Samatva, equilibrium. So we should try to see, after practicing bhakti, are we coming into that state of steady consciousness or not? Srila Bhakti Nantakwa says, Gurudev, Bada Kripa Kari, Gauda Bada Maji. Oh Gurudev, when we, you, you very mercifully gave me a place to stay and chant the holy name in Godrum. But when will my chitta be steer? When will my heart be steady? So I can chant the holy names and realize something. So Atmaneva Atmana Tushta. When the consciousness is steady, then the self is satisfied in the self. Hmm? Then you don't need anything. In this world, everyone is running after the things that they think that they need. Because they are not satisfied. And why are they not satisfied? Because they are astita pratya. They are not stita pratya, fixed. They are restless. They have restless minds. So, then Sri Krishna says, Dukesh vadnuk vigna mana sukeshu vigatas priya vita raga vaya krodha stita dira muna uchit. The person who is in Samadhi, who is Sita Pragya, then do Keshvanuk Big Namana when there are difficulties, when there are problems, a suffering condition, then they are not disturbed at all. So Keshu Vigatas Priya, and when they attain some worldly success or happiness, then they don't celebrate. They're not excited by that. You can put your hand on your heart and think. Or if someone informed you, you have won the lottery, ten million dollars. Then <laughs> Are you Stita Pragya? <laughs> if news came to you, all your family members have been killed in a plane crash, then? Are you Stita Pragya? Deliberate on the words of Sri Krishna very carefully. That person who is free from attachments, free from fear, and who never becomes angry in any situation, then he is called 
Sthita Prakya. So in two verses, see Krishna has explained to Arjuna the symptoms. Now he will explain how does he sit and how does he, uh, sorry, how does he speak. Yaha sabatta vishnehas tatta prapya shubha shubham na vinandati na dvesti tasya pragya pratishtita. Tata prapya shubha shubham. When the person attains shubha or ashubha, something auspicious or something inauspicious, then Savatta and Vishne has, he is not affected by that. In the commentary, Srila Prabhupada, he says that in this world, there is always some upheaval going on. There's always some event going on. Mm -hmm. This is the material world. Mm -hmm. Heaven is above. Hell is below, earth is in the middle, halfway to hell. Mm -hmm. So there's always lots of turmoil going on in this world. But the symptom of one who's sthita pragya is he's not affected by that at all. Mm -hmm. It may be the first world war, the second world war, the third world war, the pandemic, the great reset, whatever, not affected, nothing, no effect. This is not news. News is not what Krishna is doing today. What is what is happening here? This is only like bubbles in the ocean. Coming and going. One big non-event. So, who is in Samadhi, Sthita Pragya? They are not absorbed in that. They are absorbed in Sri Krishna. So, it, this verse is describing how does the person speak. So, Krishna is saying, Nabi Nandati Na Dvesti. When something happens in this world, Nabi Nandati, he does not welcome it, he does not praise it. Oh, this is a great mm -hmm. the achievement. Not wasting. And he is not against it also. So without praising or blaming, that person is Tasipragya Patishtita. Now, how does he sit? Yada samharte chayam kurman gari vasavasha Indriyat Indriyat Abhyas Tasya Pragya Pratishtita Just like a tortoise can take his arms, his legs, his head, everything inside the shell. So in the same way, one who is Tita Pragya, when it's time to chant the holy names, then he does Pratyahara automatically. Not by a yoga system, but by due to attachment to see Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. He becomes completely avesh, absorbed in remembering Krishna, Nam, Rup, Gun, and Lila. Indriya, 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 Tebhyas. Indriya, Indriya, Tebhyas means that his senses are withdrawn from the objects. So he is Prakipatistita in Samadhi. Then, how does such a person walk? How does he interact with the world? So Krishna said, Vishaya Vinivartante Nira Harasya Dehina Rasva Jamra Sopyasa Parandristva Nivartate For an ordinary person, if they refrain from sense gratification, 
If they stop drinking coffee, smoking, or whatever they do, then they'll become desperate. Hmm? Because when they withdraw their senses from the object, inside they're still thinking about the sense objects. But a person who has attained samadhi, pragya pratishtita, he has no inclination moving around the world but having no inclination at all to any of the sense objects here. Vishay is bish. Sense, sense, of, sense objects of bish, poison. Vishay is bish. But he has no attraction. Why? Because in that pure chitta, we have just sung this song. Nija bala bacha surit sanatana chita vihara davata jay jay sundaranan Sanatana Goswami is very very dear to the beautiful Sundar Nanda Kumar, the beautiful son of Nanda Maharaj, Chitta Bihara Dabata. And when Sanatan Goswami is chanting the holy names, then Sri Krishna comes and plays in his pure Chitta. So that is called Paramdhrishtva Nivatati. By seeing, by Anubhuti, realization of the eternal realm, then the person is no longer attracted to this dark and perilous material existence. So, one should deliberate on these things very carefully. Don't think that you will be as you are now. And when you realize Krishna, you will be as you are now, walking around and looking at things. And, eh? But you will also realize Krishna. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. There has to be a complete transformation of consciousness that comes by hearing and serving. Sri Guru and Vaishnavas. Tatvik Gyanatam Swagurum Eva Bigachet Samit Pani Srotiram Brahmanishtam. If one wants to attain Vigyan, realization, then Swagurum Eva Bigachet. It is essential. One must approach Sri Guru. How Samit Pani? Carrying wood in the hands, that means in Vedic times the Guru would be performing sacrifices and the disciple would bring to the spiritual master whatever was needed for the sacrifice. So wood was needed for the fasting. So Samit Pani. Now our sacrifice is Harinam Sankirtan. So you should come with Madanga and cocktails in your hands. So Samit Pani Srotiyam Brahmanishtam. Srotriyam Brahmanishtam. These are adjectives to Guru. Srotriyam means that Sri Guru has heard in the true sense of the word. Tom Bhakti Yoga Parbhavata Vritsaroja Asai Sutekshita Pathana Nanata Pungsa. Sutekshita Pat. One who has heard Shabda Brahma, transcendental sound, has seen Sri Krishna. So, Strotriya means Guru must have realized Sri Krishna. Brahma Nishtam, and he is fixed in Brahma. Here, Nishtam means mm, devotion. And Brahma 
Ultimately, it means Brajendra and then Shama Sunda, Sri Krishna in Vrangavan. If one will hear Harikatha from the lips of such a Tattvavit, Brajurasik, Rupanuga Guru, then, and one is serving, then one's consciousness will transform and gradually realization will come. In our conditioned state, we are quite confused. About what? Everything. <laughs> in fact, in the conditioned state, there is nothing about which we are not confused. The Badaji conditioned soul cannot understand what to speak of God, he cannot understand the, the nature of this world even, or himself. Because he has four defects. Brahm Pramada Vipralipsa Karnapata Parsha Vigya Vakya Nahi Dosha Esav Srila Krishna Skaraj Goswami Pad is saying that the conditioned soul has Brahm, Pramata, Deeper Lips, and Karnapata, four defects. Brahm means he is in illusion. In two respects, especially. In respect to his own identity. He is Atma, but he is misidentifying with the body and mind. And also, he has Brahm in relation to the world. What is this world we are seeing? How we are seeing it and how the pure Vaishnava sees it is quite different. Atmani Vedana Tuya Pade Kohi Hainu Paramasuki Dukha Dure Gelo Chintana Rohilo Chaudi Ki Ananda Deki Srila Bhaktinoda Thakur said, Oh my Lord Sri Krishna, since I have given my heart fully to you and surrendered to you, I have become overjoyed. All my sufferings have gone away. And everywhere I look, in all four directions, I see only joy. Hmm? Look around. Four directions, everyone looking. Are you seeing only joy? <laughs> so, so, there's a problem here. Are you seeing reality? And Srila Bhaktanur Thakur is in illusion? Or, Srila Bhaktanur Thakur is seeing reality? And, the unspeakable. <laughs> that which simply cannot be considered. That which is outside of the Overton window of acceptable conversation. That I might not be perfect. Brahm. How we see ourselves and how we see the world is completely wrong. And we'll have to see how Shastra Chakshu through the eyes of scripture and accept the scriptural perception and give up our ignorant perception. So Brahm, Pramada, Pramada means the tendency to make mistakes 
due to the inability to concentrate. When the mind is restless, you cannot understand. Then, the prelapsa. Oh, Karnapata, sorry. Pramada, making mistakes. It can be due to inattentiveness and it can also be expressed in terms of seeing a very things in a very narrow context and not seeing the big picture. And so we make mistakes by seeing something, and that's something in a narrow context but not seeing the whole picture. So we make a judgment based on that. So this is called Pramatta, to make mistakes due to inattentiveness. Then, Vipralipsa means a cheating propensity, deception. When we come into a situation, then we, everything in our field of vision, we analyze it and get, cast a judgment on it, speak about it and try to manipulate it in terms of what we perceive to be our own self-interest. So everything is interpreted through the lens of one's own self-interest and because of that one becomes somewhat economical with the truth. One tends to have a, the confirmational bias. One tends to interpret and filter and adjust and twist everything according to what he wants. And then that understanding he speaks to others. So this is called vipralipsa, the uh, bias of the living entity, and by which he cheats, cheats others. Then karnapatav. Karnapatav is just the mechanical failure of the senses to properly perceive objects. Mm -hmm. the, sen the senses have their capacities but it's very limited. So due to these, we cannot see the very small things, we cannot see the very large things. So we can understand what is it behind everything, what is the substrate of the things around us. So living entity has these four defects and because of this, he cannot understand anything. He's always confused. So, what I want to do today is discuss the Brahman in relation, we spoke of two types, in relation to the self and to the world. So today we want to discuss the Brahman in relation to ourselves. Who am I? Srila Jiva Goswami Pai, when describing the nature of the Atma, he has given evidence from the Padma Purana and especially one commentary on the verses of Padma Purana by Jamatri Rishi. Jamatri Rishi is a sage in the Sri Sampradaya, Ramanuja Sampradaya. So in his commentary, Jamatri Rishi had said, Na jado na vikar icha, jnana matratma ko na cha, swasmai swayam pukashaha, shadeka rupa surupa vak, chaitano vyakti shilas cha, tirananda matastata, aham arta pratikshetram, binno nyo nitya nirmala. And then this is the verse for today. You can repeat. Tata gya tritva ka tritva. Bhaktitvani jadharmakaha Bhaktitvani jadharmakaha Paramatmai kashishatva Paramatmai kashishatva Sobhava sarvada sotaha Sobhava sarvada sotaha So in this explanation, the first thing your matrimony is saying is that the Atma is not Jad. Jad means inert, dull, insentient, without consciousness. 
Why is he saying Atma is not judged? Because there are many philosophers who consider that the soul has no consciousness. First of all, in the Nyai school, the logic school of Gautam Rishi. So he has said that the Atma is eternal, but it's not conscious. Only when the Atma becomes associated with the mind, then consciousness manifests. So if in the state of liberation, when the Atma is separated from the mind, then he becomes judged. But at least there's no suffering. <laughs> this is why when Mahaprabhu was a young scholar, and a pandit, he approached Gadara Pandit, and he said, what's the definition of Mukti? So then Gadara Pandit said, Adhyanta Dukha Nivirti. The complete removal of all suffering, according to Nyai, according to the logic school. So then Nimai Pandit said, No, this is not enough. It is the Vishnu Vangri Labya, attaining the lotus feet of Supreme Lord. Mukti hit Pangyatar Upam Sorupaina Vyavyastiti, to give up the mm, outer coverings, outer things, external things. And Swarupena Vyavastiti, to be situated in one's Swarup. So, the logicians, they say, the Atma by nature is Jad. But when it contacts matter, then in contact with matter, then this consciousness appears in the mind. So then, the next school of philosophers in India, that is the Vaisheshikas. The Vaisheshikas, they say that the Atma cannot be conscious. Why? Because the Atma is all-pervading. Hmm? The Atma is everywhere. So, if the Atma were all-pervading and you were also conscious, then we would all be omniscient. Because if you were fully conscious and you're also fully everywhere, then you would be omniscient. So the fact that we are not omniscient proves that the soul has no consciousness. No, it proves that we're not all pervading. Right? So, we don't accept the conclusion of the Vaisheshikas. In the Muntako Panishad, it has been said, Eisho nur atma chaitasa veditabhya yasmin prana panchada samvivesha prana, prana is chitam saramotam pradhanam Tasmin Vishuddevi Bhavatesh Atma. That Aisho Nur Atma, this Atma is Anu. Atom. Very, very infinitesimally small. It is Akanda, indivisible. In Vedic culture, Anu Atom means in, cannot, it has no parts. It is a simplex. So the, the uh, Atma, the soul, and that is, this is very relevant. Why? We are talking about you. Hmm? He is talking about some <laughs> Gautam Rishi in India thousands of years ago. No. Understand? I am talking about you. Hmm? Yeah. But I am from France. <laughs> How can you be talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> Try to understand. atma. I am atma. Atomic. Indivisible. Eternal. Transcendental. Very tiny. Hmm? And I can know myself if my chitta, which is interwoven with pran, the, the uh, sutra, the threads of prana interwoven with my chitta and they are expanding, contracting, going up and down, causing all types of chitta vrittis. But if they can be withdrawn from their activities, then the bhavati age atma, then the glory of the soul as eternal, spiritual, <coughs> indivisible, part and parcel of, the, parcel of the Supreme Lord will be manifest. So, um, 
The first teaching in regard to Atma is that Atma is not Jag, it is not inert, not all pervading, but tiny and conscious. The Advaita Vadis, impersonists, they say that the Atma is Jnana Matra. That means it's just awareness. So Janatri Rishi is saying, Naja though, the soul is not inert, Navikari does not undergo transformation, Na Jnana Matra Pako Nacha, and it is also not Jnana Matra. Now what does this mean? Jnan Matra means self-consciousness without awareness of any object. There's a subjective awareness of oneself, but there's no awareness of any object. And this, con this consciousness, this awareness has no content. So this is the state of the Advaita Vadis in Bosnes. They want to go into the state of Gyan Matra. No object and no only awareness but also with no content as well. But we should know that the word Gyan it has three meanings. One meaning of the word Gyan is the self-awareness with no object. The second meaning of Gyan is the content of awareness, the awareness of an object. And then the third meaning of Gyan is the substrate of consciousness itself. In other words, that substance in which Gyan or consciousness, awareness uh, exists, which is conscious and which has consciousness as its property, its attribute as well. So for example, Sutta Goswami Pad has said, Vadanti tat tatvavidas tatvam yat jnanam advayam brahmaiti paramatmaiti bhagavaniti shabdite. Sri Krishna, Swayam Bhagavan Sri Krishna is advaya jnan tatva. Advai, Krishna is advai non dual. His jnan. So Krishna is just knowledge. Here the word Jnan is taken in its third sense. He is the substrate of consciousness. Who has the characteristic, he is the conscious being who also has the characteristic of consciousness. He is the Vastava Vastu, the factual substance. And that substance is conscious and has the quality of consciousness which extends also beyond his own swarup. So, these are the three meanings of Gyan. So, in personalists, when they study the scriptures, they only take the first meaning. Whenever they see Gyan, Gyan always means only a type of self-awareness without awareness of any object and without any content. So, uh, that is, so, that is called Gyan Matra. So, Janatri Rishi is saying, that Gyan Matra Ko Nacha, the soul is not Gyan Matra. So the, the evidence is in Srimad Bhagavatam, 11th Canto, chapter 3, verse 38. There it is said, Natma Jajana Na Marisyati Nayadate So Na Shiyate Savana Vid Vyabichai Nam Hi Sarvakta Sastrad Anapai Upalabdi Matram Prano yatendriya balena vikalpitam sat. The meaning is that the soul was never born and the soul will never die. It does not grow and it does not decay. Upalabdi matram. Here upalabdi matram means jnana matra. He is awareness. But here, Savanavit. He is also Savanavit. That means he is aware of the uh, temporal changes. In other words, Gyan 
is not only his knowledge, awareness is not only his substance, but there is a Gyan Briti, the quality of awareness of which the Jiva, the soul, is the substrate. And that knowledge, that awareness power, Jnana Vritti, extends beyond himself and he, become, he becomes aware of other things. This is very important to know, exactly like a magnet. A magnet is in one place, but its Vritti extends and it can move. If there are some iron filings, then the magnet, the magnet himself remains the same, but by extension of its power, he can move the iron filings. So in the same way, our Atma is situated in the heart, but its Jnana Vritti extends into the Jitta, into the Buddhi, into the Manas. And by the extension of the Jnana Vritti of the soul, the, the mind and intelligence and the Jitta all seem to be conscious. They all seem to be aware, awake. So, generally, we are not aware of ourselves, <laughs> but we are aware of our, the Gyan Vritti of our soul, which has permeated the subtle body. And what is going on there in that subtle body? We are thinking, that's me. Understand? So, In Sankhya philosophy, the philosophers of Sankhya say, the soul is conscious, but the soul has no kartritva. The soul is not the doer. Only when he comes in contact with matter, now matter is doing everything, but the soul has no agency. So these are all misconceptions, because we are studying today this verse, Tatha, Gyatritva, that the soul is not unconscious, he is conscious, but he is conscious of himself and of objects, and he is a substance which has consciousness as its attribute. And so that's Gyatritva. Then Katritva, the soul has agency. We initiate actions. And so we'll uh, go a little more deeply into that. The cartridge afterwards. I want to just um, explore a little bit more about Gyatritta. So, Janatri Rishi is saying Swasmai Swayam Prakashaha. The soul is called Swasmai. Swayam Prakash. Swayam Prakash means self-illuminating. Just like a candle. When a candle is burning, then this candle illuminates itself. Because you can see the candle. But the candle also illuminates the table, the chair, and the different objects in the room. So that is called Swayam Prakash, self-luminous self to itself, it reveals itself and it reveals other objects. But the candle is not aware of itself. And it is not even aware of the objects that it's illuminating. Right? So the candle reveals itself and it reveals other objects. But the candle itself is not aware of itself and not aware of the table or the chair that it's revealing to you. So the candle is only Swayam Prakash. It is not swasmai. Swasmai means unto itself. But the soul is swasmai swayam prakash. That means, as souls, our soul re reveals itself to others who have a spiritual vision. The soul also illuminates other things, such as the soul by gyan vritti, by extension of its potency, illuminates our material mind. Hmm? And Swasmai, the soul can be aware of himself. Hmm? So Atma is called Swasmai Swayam Prakash. Then Jamati Rishi is saying, 
Chaitanya Vyapti Shilas Cha Chidananda Makastata The soul is also Chidananda Maka So Chidananda Maka The soul is Anandatmak, joyful. Mm -hmm. If you are not happy, it means you have lost yourself. Because the self by nature is joyful. In the Briyad Aranyaka Upanishad, there's a very beautiful history. There was a great sage named Yagyavalkya. So Yagyavalkya, he had two wives, Maitreyi and Kateyani. So the time came in his life when he thought, now I will finish my Grihastha life and go to the forest and become renounced. But before I go, whatever possessions I have, I should divide them, I should divide my estate among my two wives. So he was deciding what to give to this one and what to give to that one. So then, his wife my trade, she was very intelligent. He came to my trade and said, now I'm going to the forest, I want to make a settlement of my possessions between you and Katayani. My trade said, oh my lord, Swami, if I have all the wealth in the whole universe, then can I become immortal? Yagyavalkya said, if you have all the wealth in the world, then you will know what it's like to live the life of a wealthy person. But you cannot by any means whatsoever become immortal. So then Maitreya said, then what is the use of these worldly things? Try to see the big picture of your life. What is the use of any worldly thing if in the end we have to die and leave it again and again, moving in an endless chain of birth and death? So she said to Yakyavaka Rishi, My dearest, what do you know about immortality? Please tell me about that, instruct me in that. So Yagya Valkya, he gave many uh, instructions. But the essence of the instructions is, he said, Nava are patyu kamaya pati priyo bhavati. He said, the husband is not dear because of the husband. But the husband is dear because of the Atma. <laughs> he said, Atmanas tu kamaya sarvam priyam bhavati. Very important. Atmanas tu kamaya sarvam priyam bhavati. It is not for the sake of, it, of something that that thing is dear to you, but everything is dear to us because of the Atma. And after in, uh, instructing her in this way, she was very enlightened and Yagyavaka Rishi went to the forest. What does this mean? If you love someone, or you love something, why? It's because that person is in the field of the perception of your body. Hmm? And the basis, if your body were not there, then you would have no relation with that object or that thing or that person. And so actually the foundation of our, our um, attraction for other things is our own body. That's what we love. That is what is most dear to us. But this body is only dear to us because the soul is there. If the soul will leave the body, then that body will not be dear to you. You'll take birth somewhere else and that body will be 
rotting far away. Or if someone is dear to you and they die, then they, their body will burn it, or bury it, whatever. So whatever attraction or attachment we have is due to the presence of Atma. So we can say that the Atma is not Jnana Matra, only awareness. Because it has a quality, it has the quality Gyatitra, Kartitra, Agency, agency Bhaktitra, the power to enjoy, and especially it is also called Prem Aspada. Prem Aspad. The soul is the object of love. It is the, the, the seat of love. Whatever attachment, whatever love is there anywhere, there's one reason behind it. And that is just the source of all affection is only Atma, the Self. Here, on the, on the bottom, there's a very important uh, statement here from the Priyat Aranyak Upanishad. Sukamaham avapsam nakin chita vedisham. Sukamaham avapsam means I slept very happily. Nakin chita vedisham. I didn't know anything. <laughs> So you should learn this. Sukamaham asvapsam na kinchit abedisham. You know, if, if you're tired, you fall asleep and you dream, but if someone wakes you up, then you, you, you don't feel rested, you'll go crazy. Unless you go into deep sleep. In the state of deep sleep, then the mind, the intelligence, even the ego, they are dissolved, they are not active. And so, at that time, in deep sleep, you are, are conscious, you are aware, but you are not aware of any ego. There is no object. And so this wo these words of the Brihat Aranyaka Upanishad are extremely important. Sukamaham asopsam nakinchit avedisham because they prove that Atma is Ahamata, the meaning of the word I. Everyone speaks I, I this, I that, I this, but what is the meaning of the word I? Think about it. What is the meaning of the word I? The, the, the Artha, the meaning of Aham, Ahamata is Atma the soul and it's proven by this phenomena of when after resting oh I slept very happily I don't remember anything mm. and the reason is this it proves that our ego related to this body is not eternal Hmm? Because when you go into deep sleep, then the ego which is functioning in your conventional life, it's dissolved. <laughs> so this is the first thing. That our, con that our conventional experience of our identity, the ego, this is not eternal. Because every night when we go in deep sleep, it's, it's dissolved. Then the second thing that it proves, which is also very important, that when the material ego is dissolved, there's another I. Behind the material I, there's another I. So when this I is dissolved, this I is still witnessing the state of deep sleep. Otherwise, you could not wake up and say, I slept very soundly, I don't remember anything. Because there would be no I to remember it. You see, the Impersonalists, the Mayavadis, think that b when you get free from the material ego, then behind that there is Sarvam Kalidandam. There's only the light of Brahman. 
which is one. So that Brahman has no aham artha, no I-ness in it. So if the soul, if there were not individual eternal souls, which are conscious and are the seat of the conception of I, then when you go into deep sleep, then when you came back, you would, there would be no one to remember anything. So, sukamaham asopsam nakinchit avedisam. One, it proves that your conventional ego is not eternal. You can live without it. <laughs> you will not cease to exist. Giving up the conventional material ego. And secondly, it proves that the soul is an individual with a sense of I. Now, what is very important here is that if the soul did not have a hum, a sense of I, then it could not identify with the material ego. Right? Let's say that beyond the material ego there is only Brahman. Hmm? How is this Brahman going to identify with the material ego? Understand? It's not possible. So the soul, Atma, must have a sense of I-ness. And that I-ness is projected, extended through Jnana Vritti into the Chitta. And then the tamasic, darkened portion of the Chitta, that portion of the Chitta which is darkened with many, many samskars, impressions, that is the ahankar, and the eyeness of the soul, by its jnana vritti, the potency of consciousness is extended into that darkened portion of the chitta, which is our material ego, ahankar, conventional ego. Understand? So. If you don't go into deep sleep, then you never feel refreshed. But every night, you, let's say your life is terrible and everything is going wrong. Hmm? But if you just sleep, then you wake up, you feel good. Hmm? Why? Because in that state of deep sleep, the material ego was dissolved and a little glimpse of the ananda of the atma was experienced. This is why we are refreshed. Hmm? Because there's a glimpse of the ananda of the atma. Hmm? I think if people they are very depressed and everything is going in a very bad way, they just want to sleep so they can try to get some more ananda from the atma. Huh? So, Whatever is dear to us, whatever gives happiness, to, this is only due to the presence of Atma. Hmm? This is also why people are attached to sex life. Hmm? People are thinking that there is Ananda in sex life. But no, when the Pran is disturbed, hmm? the Pran comes to a state of extreme disturbance in the sex life and then there is a moment where there's a, uh, the uh, property arranges for the ego to become in, uh, to become inactive just for a moment and then the person in their sex life they oh ananda now I'm in ananda but that ananda was not the ananda of the sex life it was the ananda of the atma so it holds true what Yagya Bhakti Rishi said, whatever is dear to you, is dear because of Atma. Hmm? Your family is dear to you, your husband, your wife is dear to you, the sex is dear to you, your body is dear to you, whatever it is, whatever is dear to you, for any reason, the actual reason, is Ananda. So Prakriti has made that arrangement. That some there's a momentary glimpse of Ananda from sex life because uh, in this world procreation has to go on. So pra the word procreation comes from Prakriti in Sanskrit. Prakriti means procreation. Hmm? That which causes the Prakriti manifests all the beings of the world. 
So Prakriti has made this arrangement because there's extreme hardship in uh, raising a family. So, you know, and then no one would do it. So Prakriti suspends the activity of the ego for the moment to give the soul a slight glimpse of Ananda for a moment and, and so everyone is working away in this world like Prajapati, Daksha, making so many children and trying to enjoy. And also for Chanaka Rishi, Chanaka Pandit, and Kam Shastra said that Prakriti gives to ladies eight times more Ananda than men. Because they have to compensate for, they have to go through the extreme difficulties of pregnancy and childbirth also. So no one, ladies will not have any children if Prakriti, the power which brings about procreation, was, were not manifesting this. So, in this way, Sukamahama Sopsam, Nakinchit Avedi Sam. This reveals the presence of the Self and all things give joy. No, only the Self gives joy. But the joy, though the Atma is Chidana and Atmaka, the joy of the Atma and the joy of Bhagavan is not the same quality. See, Krishna's Ananda is his Ladini Shakti, and it is unlimited and transcendental. And the Ananda in the Atma is actually not really Ananda. It is called Dukkha Pratyogita. Just means the absence of suffering. When there's no suffering at all, then one feels a kind of and it's not really a positive Ananda, but relative to the material world it is. Mm. So now consider very carefully the self is conscious and has a jnana vritti its own power that expands out like a magnet and the jnana vritti of the atma goes into the chitta into the subtle body and now the soul is placing his mm, identity there in the into the material ahankar. Understand? He's doing it. This is an action. This is an action because soul has kartritva. Gyatritva, kartritva. The soul acts. And so the soul is doing this act. The act of placing his ahankar, conception of who I am, in the contaminated chitta, in the material ego. So it's necessary to not do that. Srila Sanatana Goswami Pad, in his Briya Bhagavatam Rita, he has quoted a verse from Yoga Vashishta. Api Pushpava Dalanad, Api Netrani Milanad, Sukarohan Kati Tyago. The meaning is this. It is as easy to take your sense of I out of the hankar and into the soul. It is easier to do that than it is to pluck a flower. Api pushpa avadalanat. Just as it's easy to pluck a flower, it's easier to take your aham, ahamkara, your sense of identity, out of the material ego and put it in the self, in Atma. Api netrani melanad. As easy as it is to close your eyes. Close your eyes. It was quite easy, you can open them again, now. don't sleep. <laughs> as easy as it is to close one's eyes, it is more easy to remove the ahankar, the sense of self from the material ego and place it in the atma. So, why don't we do it? Hmm? That is duplicity. You see all our great acharyas, 
especially our Prabhupada Bhaktis Dhamsa Thakur. He, he said, Saralata e Vaishnavata. Vaishnavism is simplicity. Don't be duplicitous. Don't engage in deception, especially self-deception. This is also the tenth offense against the holy name. Sutva pi nama mahatme ya priti rahito dama ham mamadi paramo namni sopya paradakrit. After hearing these instructions from the lips of Sri Guru about the nature of Atma, after hearing the glories of the Holy Name, to not have affection for the Holy Name, and to Hamamadi Parano Sopitnama Paradakrit, to hold on to the conception of I and mine related to the material body and mind. This is the tenth offense to the Holy Name. So, Tabu Jani Aparadi Tohete Prachur Krishna Nama Bija Tahe Nakare Ankur. Sila Krishna's Kavraj Goswami Pad said that when we chant the holy names, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Then Nam Prabhu manifests. His beautiful swarup. Yam Shama Sundra Machinti Gunasarupam. Beautiful form, threefold bending form of Shama Sundar. He manifests his qualities, his associates and his pastimes. Because the Nam is Krishna Nama Bija Tahina Kariamkur. Nam is a bead like a seed. So when we chant the seed sprouts. So the question comes. I am chanting Hari Nam. Is this seed Nam beach sprouting or not? So, if the seed of Nam is not sprouting in our heart, then we should know that we that person is committing prachur aparad, an abundance of offenses, many many offenses. And today we are just discussing this, the tenth offense, Ahamma Mahadi Parmo Namni Sopya Paradakrit. To keep by one's will, by one's desire, to keep one's sense of self, ahankar, of the soul, in the material ahankar. This is an action that we are doing. And it is an offense to the Holy Name. The general person, common person, they cannot help it. Why? They are so in ignorance and they have not heard. But after hearing from the lotus lips of Sri Guru and understanding the subject, if a person will not withdraw their sense of self from the material ego, then this becomes Nama Parad and this is why the seed of Nam is not manifesting in the Krishna's beautiful form and qualities and pastimes. So we'll complete it. We'll just, now it's time for our team. Please try to understand this subject very deeply and to follow, as our acharyas have described, how to overcome the offenses to the Holy Name. So today we looked a little bit at the subject of the first defect of a conditioned soul. Not a, both parts, but just the first part, Brahm. Confusion in regard to one's own identity. So, deliberate on these things very, very deeply and turn your life around. Don't go in the way that you have been going for so many lifetimes. After hearing, come into the path, the actual path of following our chairs, not imitating them. Only wearing tilak and tosimala will not do. We have to actually follow their teachings, follow them outwardly and inwardly, as far as our capacity will allow. Gaur Premanande!